G'day and welcome to my garage. This is the the original uh, five inch pulley that didn't work. So I've got to replic replicate all these drill uh, hole patterns and also the dog drive notch. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I've already drilled and tapped this side and now I'm setting up to do the pattern to bolt the fourth 4 inch to the new 5 inch and I'll say ish so I only need to this is an M5 it's an M5 hole it's a 5mm hole I only just need to mark these should really do this on the on the drill press to get them I might go and do that but um, yes I've got to now take this off take the back plate off because I need to drill through the five, new 5 inch um, and then tap it to M5 I like to drill all the way through. I don't like blind holes, and um, yeah, just in case the screw pokes through a bit, I can trim the screw off. But it shouldn't do because I've already had it on the old one. All right, I'll um, I'll go and drill drill the five inch out to this three hole pattern PCD and tap it. I'll do this on the drill press, the drilling anyhow. I want to make sure it's nice and perpendicular. Now I've got to, I'm working on this first counter shaft off the motor. I need to nah. so that's the rest of the pulley setup. So I've got to pull that apart so I can screw that one on because uh, it screws that way. Um, if I made it go the other way, it would probably <laughs> it would probably the, be the first one that I've got trouble with. But anyhow, this has got to come apart so I can pull that back together. I've done the dog drive in the back here, but I forgot one thing. This dog drive has to be timed or clocked to the position of the set screw that holds the gear in place. Because once I line that up, then invariably this has to be the position to line up with the peg. So I'm not going to move the peg if, I, if this is in the wrong place and I, I just put it on didn't think about having to clock it, so it could be anywhere wrong. Uh, what I will do is um, the grub screw bears down on a flat spot in the counter shaft. I'll just file a new flat spot and that will fix it. So I've got to get this counter shaft out so I can do so I can check its position and of course it doesn't want to come out why doesn't it want to come out? alright, <laughs> leave it with me I'm, I set a punch mark all of the plates and the uh, pulleys that's how it all bolts back together again
so goes that way. Got to ease this out, but it was a 5 8 shaft. If I put a 16 mil in there, it'll be well, actually, it's only um, 5 8, I think, is 15.87 or something. So it's only going to be uh, 0.13 ish. Oversized, what's that? Four, five now. It's because there's so many loose components in here. I tried with the dummy shaft, but um, yeah, it just didn't want to go. So I'll put a uh, Terrible the way they mark these things, you can hardly read them. Ah, oh, this is quicker. That's 14. This is 16. I will put it in the vise and see if I can improve on the fitting. I, um, I reamed it out to 16 millimeters. The shaft is 15.85, um, 86, around 87, around there somewhere. 15.87 is uh, 0.625 so now it's out to 16 mil it fits it's got one and a half tooth hour clearance so uh, I fitted it up I've lined it up with the um, with the flat with the grub screw with the uh, what do you Americans call it um, set screw I call it that too sometimes and as luck would have it, I don't know whether you can see that, but um, there's the hole for the drive dog, and it lines up with the plate. Now this plate could have been put on in one in five positions. No, wait a minute. No, I lined it up. Oh, I don't know. I don't know because that's a new gear. So the timing marks I had on the new gear weren't there. So it could have the drillings from this one from this blank into that blank 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 pulley. That that pulley could have been anywhere. It didn't matter. So the time, I don't know. Somehow it lined up perfectly and I didn't even think about it. So that's good. I can now put this in permanently I think. Shaft fits beautiful. Like I said it has got a has got a little bit of play there, about one and a half tooth out. But um fits lovely. I shall now fit that in and pull the front one apart because the, the five inch pulley is still on the front one. Both pulley <coughs> assembled pulleys have been fitted and I'll just run through them as, uh, as we go. 
So I'm on I'm on the first. We'll say first there, and I'm on low range. Low range on the spindle trans transmission. So we have the first counter shaft, the primary shaft. That's driven by um, uh, off the motor through this eight inch pulley, off an inch and three quarter pulley. Um, this is second counter shaft up here, and that drives a six inch pulley and a two inch pulley. The spindle is it? Oh, you, you probably can't see it, but but the spin the uh, spindle has the reverse six inch pulley and two inch pulley. So these these are the two pulley sets I've fitted. So currently we're on first gear low range. Um, I'll just reposition you. Okay, okay. You can now yep, you can now see the spindle. So here we go. That is um, 88 RPM. Oh, I know that. Well, I'm hoping that's correct by this small electronic RPM tachometer, digital tachometer. So it says that's doing 88 RPM. Remembering we're in the low range on the secondary transmission side. Let's go up a notch. We're now doing 160 RPM. RPMs are the spindle speeds and fourth gear in low range. That spindle speed is 535. So let's go back to first gear and we'll switch it up to high speed so we've gone from a two inch to six inch to a six inch to a, from to a six inch to a two inch so this is first gear high range, which is supposed to be 710 RPM. Third gear high range, 2305. And fourth gear high range, 4,150 and there's a horrible vibration in that speed that's awfully high but 4,150 but a terrible vibration so where's it coming from 
and it didn't have it in any of the others. I'll disconnect the high-low range, so the spindle's not connected now. It's just these two pulleys. I've checked these pulleys a couple of times just to make sure they're, they're running true. I uh, took out a shim, 4,000 shim from the spindle. It's settling in, I might have to take another take one of the shims out which kicks it a little bit. This is going to be changed to a uh, a, a roll and a, a ball bearing or a roller. I've got the bearings, I can't remember what, what I got, whether they were roller or not. But I'm going to put uh, at least a ball bearing uh, spindle housing. So, and Again, that um, still in the still in fifth gear in low range spindle connected now. So this hasn't changed too. So there's no vibration. Um, the vibration. I can put down to an out of balance somewhere in the spindle. It's not doing it anywhere else, so it's got to be an out of balance in the spindle, I, I reckon. Um, 4,000 4, RPM is pretty high, I don't need it. I was, uh, during this exercise of making these pulleys, I was using the 2, 3, 4 stages, inch. Two, three, four inch stages while I was cutting. Well, actually, um, yeah, while I was cutting the the, the five inch, re cutting the original five inch pulleys and cutting the remade five inch pulleys and then cutting the remade, remade five inch pulleys. I think I had three goes of it. Uh, I don't know. I just won't use high range, fourth gear high range, or fourth speed high range. So that's it for me on this particular job. One day in the future, it won't be, it won't be soon. I've got other things I want to do. It's one day in the future I will put um, bearings, at least uh, ball bearing bearings in the spindle head but I've got to cast a new spindle head for that and this current spindle head has a, a it's a split split journal it has a bearing cap um, when I put ball bearings in there I will cast this as one solid unit but that's that's a fair way down the track so I've got seven of the eight speeds I can successfully use from 88 to 2300 and yeah 2300.